in the power slope method method 1 that we just discussed there are derivatives dit by dvt dit by dt or dvt by dt and it is generally not easy to obtain derivatives and therefore literature has some solutions where you can do the power slope method without actually taking derivative of a signal so that's what we are going to see let us first have the basic circuit topology that is a pv module connected to the load r not through a dc to dc converter having duty cycle as a control input now there is a buffer capacitor we will put a buffer capacitor slightly on this side leaving some space to the right of the buffer capacitor because i want to introduce something here now here i will introduce two components one is okay let us mark this vt and it now let me put a component here a resistance and that resistance is connected to the ground through this power switch bjt or a mosfet or an igbt now what signal do you give to the base or gate of this power semiconductor switch so it will be a pulsed waveform something like this not necessary that it should it should be pulsed but it it can uh, it can be even uh, a linear uh, linearly varying wave shape a triangle wave shape or any such thing in such a case this will go through the linear region but it is easy to give a pulsed waveform so we will just have uh, a look at the concept uh, with this kind of a, a wave shape given to the bjt here so the bjt is actually acting like a switch now let us see how this operates let us give this resistor a name i'll call that one as r1 this is r1 and remember that r1 is a very large value this is much much larger than the input impedance that is presented by the dc dc converter and much larger than this r0 so actually this is acting like an additional load on the buffer capacitance the buffer capacitance is uh, is supporting dc dc converter plus r0 as the load to that now we have added the additional load but it's a very small additional load whenever this bjt is turned on r1 comes across the terminals now what is the effect on the characteristic iv characteristic of the panel so you have vt and you have it let me draw the iv curve now let us say this is not there in the picture r1 is not in the picture that is this transistor is off then r0 when you take it on to the input side as a function of d you will see rt so let us say rt is something like that 1 by rt now when you switch this on when this is high so during that time this is switched on and r1 comes across the terminals of the pv panel so you will see that it will take a line like this a load line will take a line load line like this it will be rt parallel r1 now rt uh, parallel r1 will be uh, uh, corresponding to a load which is lesser than rt and therefore this load line starts moving towards the short circuit depending upon the value of r r1 now the, for this operating point let me draw a vertical down straight down like this and for this operating point also i will draw a vertical line straight down like this now let me uh, consider this on off periods during the time when this is high the bjt is on r1 gets connected so during the time when this is high r1 gets connected then this is this load line and the corresponding vt terminal voltage is this and during the time when this is off 
R1 is not in the picture and it is only RT that is presented to the PV panel and it is this load line. This is the operating point and the corresponding VT is this line. So if you see the VT swings between these two lines as shown. So if I say this uh, during this period green, during the green period here the switch is on which means it will correspond to this values of VT and during the period when it is low switch is off then it will correspond to this portions. So the VT will be something like this and likewise there will be a variation in the current also. So let us look at the VT versus time curve. So the VT versus time curve will look something like this. There will be a ripple. So there will be a ripple in VT and also there will be a ripple in IT and then there will be a ripple in the power P which is equal to V into IT, VT into IT. And we will use this ripple to actually give a distinction or trying to find the point where the maximum power occurs and that is how we will try to uh, use this ripple to find the maximum power point. Now let us look at how we go about doing this using this ripple as a distinguishing feature for identifying the maximum power point. Now consider this static characteristic IT versus VT and the power versus VT. This is the power versus VT. And let me consider a vertical, a vertical line here representing a particular operating point. And let me draw the vertical and the horizontal line. This would this point here would represent an operating point at a given instant and the corresponding extension to the IV curve would be here. So now here what I am going to do now is superimpose on the voltage. Now this is the zero of the voltage and if you look at it on this voltage which is supposed to be a DC I will superimpose a ripple. How do you superimpose a ripple? Just like we discussed earlier I am going to use a resistive switcher and introduce this ripple. Now let me take the peak amplitude of the ripple, project it onto the power curve and then extend it onto the horizontal. So whenever the voltage ripple increases, the power ripple also correspondingly increases as you can see. So on, the, on this slope where the slope is positive. On the left side of the peak, this is the peak power point. On the left side of the peak power point where the slope is positive, whenever there is an increase in the voltage ripple, there will be an increase in power ripple too. So the power ripple and the voltage ripple will be in phase. Now on the right side of the peak power point, the slope is negative. So let us have a representative operating point line here. I am having the vert vertical and the horizontal. And uh, as before, I will introduce a ripple on the voltage. And if I extend the ripple amplitude, you will see that there is an inversion already. So whenever the voltage is increasing, the power is decreasing and when the voltage is decreasing power increases. So you see that here because of this negative slope there is an inversion the voltage and the power ripples are out of phase. So we will be using this information on one side of the operating point the power ripple and the voltage ripple are in phase. On the other side of the operating point, the voltage and the power ripples are out of phase. And uh, indirectly, we are measuring the slope. So this is also a power slope detection. Uh, but here, we are not using any d by dt. 
no differentiation action is coming into picture we need the power variable we need the voltage variable power variable is obtained by multiplication now let us see in a block schematic way how to build this system so let me have a multiplier block and the input of the multipliers are IT and the VT so you are measuring the panel current and the panel terminal voltage and the output of that would be the power and you are taking the power and the voltage these two are the quantities that we would like to process so first let me process it by removing DC so you pass it through a DC block circuit so when you remove the DC so you will see that here before the DC block circuit the values of the voltage and the power signal will be something like this so there will be a DC plus on that there will be a ripple the power signal also will be something like this similar except that the ripple will be either in phase or out of phase depending upon which side of the peak power point the current operating point is so after it passes through the DC block how will the uh, waveform look like so the DC is removed so this will come down so you will see that the average value is zero you will only have the ripple content now is the ripple content that we would like to process even on the power side after you remove the DC block uh, if you remove the DC from the power waveform you will have a similar such waveform here too except for the phase chain then after the DC block we will pass it through a zero cross detector ZCD is a zero cross detector the reason that we need to pass through a zero cross detector is that what I have shown as a nice rectangular waveform need not be it could be triangular or it can have a, a, a smoother rise and fall and therefore uh, you need to pass it through a zero crossing detector so that you get well defined sharp waveforms so let us see after the zero crossing detector you will see that I will have well defined waveforms like this this basically this waveform going from minus VCC to plus VCC so that will be VCC it will be minus VCC so next we will add the signal obtained from the power signal and the signal obtained from the voltage signal we will add them up what do you expect so you see that if if the operating point is on the left side of the peak power point the power ripple and the voltage ripple are in phase so this and this will be in phase so it will be added up and if this is because this is already saturated it will be the same wave shape if suppose the operating point had been on the uh, falling uh, on the falling slope that is a negative slope region to the right of the peak power point you will see that these two on adding will become zero so when uh, when the voltage is positive the uh, power uh, equivalent power signal value will be negative when the voltage is negative here the power signal value will be positive so when you add up it will result in a zero value so therefore we can see that we have two regions I will have two regions one is if the operating point is on the left side of the power curve uh, peak power point and if the operating point is on the right side of the peak power point so if the operating point had been anywhere in the left side of the peak power operating point on the positive slope you will see that these two will add up because they are in phase and you will still have this kind of a 
wave shape. Now, if suppose the operating point was on the right side of the peak power point, the phases of the voltage and power are opposite, they will subtract and you will have zero. Now next what we do is pass this wave shape through an absolute value circuit so that all this negative portion I will bring it up, all this negative portion bring it up, rectify basically. So let us draw the output of the ABS circuit, absolute value circuit. Again for the left side operating point and the right side operating point. So on the left side when this gets rectified you will see it is a constant value. So actually you will see that this portion gets rectified absolute value there, this portion absolute value here. This will remain 0, the right side portion. Now this value I can now set a threshold, V threshold and then pass it through a comparator like this. So I will set a V threshold, a comparator and output going from either VCC or 0. Now this waveform is given here. Now you see that whenever it is high, whenever this is high, output is 0. Whenever it is low during this period, whenever it is low, output is high. So if you draw that portion, you will see that I will again mark left and right, left operate, operating point, right operating point. You will see that there is an inversion whenever it is high, during the left side it is high, output will be low and during the time when it was low when it is on the right side of the operating point it becomes high. Now this I will pass it through a gain block so that this becomes 0 to 1 rather than 0 to VCC I will make it 0 to 1 and then pass it through a filter and the output of the filter is what I will give to the duty cycle input control input of the DC DC converter. One should note that the filter output is actually passed through a PWM block and then given to the duty cycle input of the DC DC converter which is interfacing with the PV panel. Uh, here I have just shown uh, directly at the filter output because the filter output is directly proportional to the duty cycle. But in actuality there will be bef uh, in between a PWM block before you give to the duty cycle input of the DC-DC converter. Now what will be this filtered waveform like? So let me superimpose this. So the filtered waveform will fall down here when it is zero and then rise up gradually with a time constant like this. Now this is actually representing the duty cycle. Now consider a converter which is the buck boost converter. In the buck boost converter we saw that the range of the buck boost converter is the entire IV curve in the first quadrant. So RT is equal to R0 into 1 minus D by D whole square and here when D, the load line corresponding to the uh, vertical axis, the short circuit operating point D is equal to 1. The load line corresponding to the X axis, VT axis, open circuit point D is equal to 0. So in between you have the various load lines for different values of D. Now consider this. When the operating point was on the left, means left of the peak power point. Somewhere here the operating point is there. So when it is there, you see that the duty cycle is decreasing. This red line, duty cycle is decreasing. When duty cycle is decreasing, you see that the operating point is moving like this to the right. It is moving to the right. So let us say this is the peak power point and the operating point is moving to the right. 
so it has crossed the peak power point and then gone into this negative slope region the moment it has gone to the negative slope region it the filter uh, the uh, gain output is high one and the filter output is now trying to rise towards that value one or the duty cycle is trying to rise which means that this is again going back the operating point is now moving left so you will see the operating point moving thus and crossing the peak power point so if we control this window this window you can control by putting the proper value of hysteresis here so you can make a big window or a small window so that this will be moving right left right left around the peak power operating point or the maximum power operating point and thereby achieving maximum power point tracking.